Welcome back to 23 Minute Reads with me, Maya D. This is kind of like my virtual book club because in these short videos, I share with you my takeaways from my current reading. And right now, that is Giving Life to Movement. This is a part of my 23 to 23 challenge where I'm reading 23 minutes per day, every day as an action of self-love, as an investment into myself, and as a way of providing myself with some consistency in an ever-changing world. Hoping that you will join me along in this journey by liking this video, subscribing to this new channel, and dropping some comments down there in that comment section so that there's an actual dialogue going on. Having in mind that while I have several decades of experience as a dancer, an educator, and a curriculum writer, I'm not the know-all be-all for this book. I'm simply providing a space for dialogue. Well, this week, I started a new book, and I read from the... The table of contents because I like reading everything. I read from the acknowledgments all the way up to page 54 and let me get my notes so I can give you my takeaways. Feel free to go ahead and like, subscribe, or drop a book in the comments below just so that I know who's here with me. So it's interesting. The day that I'm recording this video is actually uh, Kuji Chagulia which for those who don't celebrate Kwanzaa is the day of self-determination. And when I say I am determined to make this video, um, it was important for me to start this new channel, share this information, and I'm determined to get it done. Like I don't even have all of my recording equipment with me. So we are, I am making sure I get the thing done. So if something, if the camera falls, my phone falls down or like, there's some bumps along the way. Just know that I am determined to get this information out there. So bear with me. So our three takeaways. Takeaway number one is the body universe. So on page six of the preface, I was reminded of this idea of the body universe. And here's a quote from the book. So that's your technique connects the physical body, metaphysical practices, internal dialogue and assessment, space and environment and the universal forces together as one, creating the body universe. So this technique actually divides the body into three triangles, three distinct triangles. And those triangles are inspiration, expression, and balance. In easily accessible language, you can already see that there's a lot of depth to this technique. But what stood out to me and why this I'm bringing this up is this idea of accessibility. Academic writing is not always accessible, meaning that it's written in a way for those who identify as academics to understand it. It has a certain level of technique. It has a certain level of uh, terminology that it that it uses. And because of that, it's not the most inclusive thing. You will find reading this book repeatedly, repeatedly you hear the value that Sylvester Technique places in it being a technique that is open to all. So it makes sense that this writing demonstrates that same value. While I love to hear stories, um, I actually place equal value in written information and oral traditions. And therefore I understand the impact that that this written text is going to have on society, on the technique, on the legacy of the information being about available, excuse me, available to the future. Because as the author states, here's another quote, there's currently no written text that specifically analyzes Sylvester technique in regard to its connection to the elements of nature or the possibility of self ascension through dance. Dance is just one of the very rich forms of cultural technology that we find in the African diaspora. And I'm so very happy that Williams has picked up this mantle and engaged in the conversation that allows Sylvester technique to be available to future generations. Takeaway number two is Capoeira Regional. So up to this point, meaning literally up to reading this, point, this book this week, I had only heard of Capoeira Angola. But from the book, I learned that Capoeira Angola was considered the dirty amateur sport by the Brazilian, 
keep, let me try that again. The Brazilian Boxing Confederation Capoeira region now was considered the more cleaner version and was actually taught to the police force. This information is included in the African Brazilian culture and Sylvester technique section that talks about African Brazilian culture around the 1970s. So not too long ago when we're looking at the span of history. In this chapter, tourism is discussed and how it had positive effects on Brazilian economy, but also had negative effects on impacts on Brazil aspects of Brazilian culture and capoeira being one of those things that was exploited through, um, I guess, for the, the process of, of that tourism. I would actually describe dance as a physical manifestation of culture that is informed by societal and political events. This notion seems to kind of align with what Williams suggests, which is that of someone who is studying Sylvester technique to also pair that with studying the Afro-Brazilian um, culture. There are spaces where they overlap. There are spaces where we see how this thing going on in society has impacted the dance, has informed the dance. Takeaway number three is conversations. And this can be found on page 26 of the book. Conversations with the Body was a series of exercises Rosangela created in 1982. A few years later, Brazil has a, um, creates a new constitution that has a focus on social environmentalism. A direct quote from the book is included and it states, social environmentalism here's the beginning of the quote, reflects Brazilian belief that concerns with the environment are inseparable from conversations with the development of social equity and justice, end quote. So I understand this to mean, actually I understand this as a testament of that connection between mind, body, and spirit. This connection means that there is no, that, not there is no, this connection means that there's actually constant dialogue slash conversations between these aspects of the human body or the body of a nation. Intentional practices help to strengthen the voices of those aspects that are engaging in that conversation and the understanding of what those voices are saying, which has the potential to strengthen the entire body be that the human body or that of the body of a nation. Here's a dance example. So you're in a dance class and you're trying to perform this grounded movement, which means that you need to maintain that grounded stance for the duration that, of you performing that movement. And you just can't seem to get low enough to like execute the movement. Or when you do, you just can't maintain it. The next day you wake up, your body is aching because of those brief moments when you were able to get into that grounded stance and maintain that grounded stance. So what your body is actually telling you, what your quads are actually saying to you is that there's a reason why you can't maintain that grounded stance. And it's your job to do the investigation to figure out what you can do to, what's the root of that problem? Why can't you get into that grounded stance? and then how you're going to create a plan to get into it and maintain it in a safe way, right? So stability, how can you get into it and maintain it? Similar to that, um, let's say a nation decides that it wants to be number one in academic achievement, but can't seem to hit that mark, right? Investigations show a specific district specific district might be the main reason of why that nation isn't hitting the mark. Intentional conversations find to get to the root reveal that there's low attendance in that district and there's also insufficient transportation to and from the schools. Hmm. Intentional conversations with that aspect of the nation's body can lead to the creation of a solution that allows the entire nation to be better. The entire nation. But I don't know. 
Am I off target? Uh, what did you get from this section? Let me know in the comments below. And as you're subscribing to this new channel, thank you for staying with me to the end of this video. Spread a good word, stay blessed, and I can't wait to read your comments and see you next week.